Well, friends, I grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior at Jesus Christ. Amen. I tell you, I've always been one who has always enjoyed a good challenge, and uh, the text today from Malachi has provided that for me uh, for years now. Uh, my wife and I, um, from the time we got married, this has been something, this has been a, a text we have held dear, and we have strove to, to, to take seriously. The Bible says it, and we believe it, and, and therefore we're going to do our best. It goes like this. He says, bring all tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven to you. I will pour out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test, says the Lord. Now, I got to tell you, uh, Jesus made it, uh, made it very clear when he was tempted by Satan, if you remember in the wilderness, that we should not put the Lord to the test. If you take a look at uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 6, Jesus cites Deuteronomy 6, 16. Don't put the, don't put the Lord to the test. However, we're actually, folks, we are actually called to do that when it comes to our tithe. Now many people, a lot of us, a lot of people, they, they, they wait to give to God and His work until they're done taking care of, uh, of everything else that month. And of course, we know how, how that goes. Instead, folks, I, we could, we could give to God first and let him prove himself. Sid and I, you know, for... Um, when we um, got out in the ministry here, folks, 36 plus years ago, I, you know, we have, we have sought to, to do that as long as we can remember. And I, I got to tell you, he's, he's been very faithful. I, I stand here to tell you that. He's been very faithful. Whether I was making a, a single salary of $1,200 or $12,000 when I first came out of a seminary back in 1982, or now, at the latter part of my career here when I'm making much more as a senior pastor here. The truth is that it's not really, quote-unquote, giving to God. That's not what, how I look at this. It's not I'm given to God, but rather using what he's given me, what he's given us. Pastor Jake, talked about that sense of being steward of, of what we've been given. Because after all, everything we have belongs to Him. And it's true. Because without our minds, without our abilities, without our passions, without the opportunities that have come our way, folks, we would not be where we are today. No matter who you are, no matter what you're doing. Life itself has been a gift from God. Everything you and I have is a gift from God. And that's where I start out. That's, that is a central conviction of our faith. And it humbles us. But it gives us that perspective that from 30,000 feet. Therefore, you, you and I, we, we simply have a stewardship responsibility of managing uh, what we've been given to make sure that it's accounted for. Now, folks, tithing is not about a percentage. This isn't a... I've never regarded it as a legalistic thing. Uh, tithing isn't about a percentage, but it is about a principle. It's about a principle in our life. That God will take what we bring to him, and he will multiply it for uh, the good of others. 
and he'll continue to provide for our needs as well. The challenge, as Malachi puts it, as our Lord is quoted as saying, try it. Put me to the test. So, how am I using, how are you using what God gives you? It may be a tithe of time that you give of your time. You you, you volunteer, you get engaged. It might be a tithe of your talents. It might be a tithe of your treasure. How can you help those whom God has brought across your path, folks? Part of it's supporting a community of faith in the work that we are about. But beyond that, in our, in our daily lives, let me ask, what about that single mother waitress struggling to care for and feed her children? Do you tip generously? Does a co-worker going through a divorce need an encouraging word? Are, are you willing to step up, engage another person's life, their hurts. What about that neighbor who can't pay the electric bill this this month? You don't know the whole story. Why they're in that situation. We're so easy, we, we so easily turn to judging rather than seeking to understand sometimes. The tithe, the the sharing of our time, of our talents, of our money, to the glory of God and to the welfare of His people, of, of His creation. That's who we are. That's why we've been put here. There are so many ways to tithe from the gifts that God has given us. And when we do, he says he's going to pour out blessings upon us. And those blessings are not in terms of of more stuff. That's not what this is about. But rather blessings so that we can continue to bless others. To whom much has been given, much is required is expected. What we talk about here is a godly cycle of of paying it forward. As God has blessed us that we pay that forward. God wants you to be a blessing with the gifts that he's given you, folks. I mean, the first thing is we got to believe that. We got to believe that the gifts that we have have been gifts from him. If if we don't believe that, if we don't accept that, then this doesn't mean anything. But if that's our conviction, if that's where our heart is, not only do we understand it but we believe that, then I want you to know that God wants you to be a blessing with the gifts that he has given you, whether time, talents, or treasure. It's it's not the size of the gift that we're talking about here, but rather your willingness to even do it that counts. And so I'll tell you, in, in light of that, the question then becomes, for me, this is, this is one of those, this is a, this is a special time of year for me. It, it's, a, it's a faithful time, it's a faith-filled time as I ponder all that God's given me. And how do I use that to his glory and to the welfare of others? Obviously, I've got expenses. But there are needs out there. And I'm part of something bigger than just myself. So the question becomes, what am I going to do with those blessings God has given me? And this is what I go through. This is what my wife and I talk about. In light of those suffering, for instance, the, the after effects of um, 
of the hurricanes in the southeast who have just been devastated, or those in parts of the world, folks, living in shanty towns of corrugated cardboard homes, I, I know, I, I recognize that I am fortunate and I am rich. I'm fortunate and I am rich. In the book, Role of a Lifetime, one of the books that I got to read over the sabbatical time here, the author shares a number of poignant lessons, and, uh, but at one point he refers to our lives in terms of the quote-unquote depth of, of our foundation and the quote-unquote height that we should be reaching for. The depth of our foundation, the height to which we are reaching for as God's people. Now that depth, that foundation, that is faith. It's comprised of faith. It's comprised of character, integrity, honesty, humility, and stewardship. Stewardship of God's creation. Stewardship of my life. Stewardship of the mysteries of God. Part of something bigger than just myself. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about God. That's who we are. And the deeper those characteristics go in our lives, that deeper that faith goes, the more solid our foundation will be. And that foundation upon which you build on, which is centered in God, folks, which is centered in Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord, determines the height that we can attain in and with our lives. It's not about basking in the world's accolades. No matter what others say out there, It's not about how many material possessions we accumulated, as others say out there. And as at times, we worship. We're so tempted to worship the lifestyles of the rich and famous. That that's what it's all about. I gotta tell you, that is so wrong. To follow our Lord is not about that. If you've been blessed with that, that's great. It just means more responsibility. Blessed to be a blessing and to do it cheerfully, to do it willingly. Instead, I got to tell you what, what this life is about is how, how we will maximize what God has given us on behalf of others, recognizing the opportunities that we have each day to add value to the lives around us, to add value to the lives around us and to make a difference in our world. That's what we're about. That's who we are. With everyone we meet, we're called to treat each person as someone special because they are, because every soul is valued by God. We laugh with one another in the good times, but when hard times come, we rally. We could. We could use our money for good, storing up treasures in heaven, finding ways to share with those in need. We could. God isn't keeping track of the amount of money, folks, that you give. Know that. God's not keeping track. Hey, one day we'll, we'll, we'll make accounting of that. I don't know how that'll all go. I just want to hear at the end, well done, good and faithful steward. But I will tell you that he's more concerned about your heart. He's more concerned uh, about your willingness to give and to share in the first place. And I asked myself this time, I said, do, do I need to rethink? I'll ask you, do you need to rethink your giving plan? 
You see, everything you have, including your bank account, is a gift from God. He expects you and me to use it in the best way possible to add value to the lives of others for eternity. And I'll tell you, that's the work of this church. Both with our ministries to our young and our old, within these walls and and our ministries and our mission to those struggling outside of these walls. You and I, we gather weekly. We gather weekly to, to, to worship our awesome God and to do so with smiles on our faces and, and lustful, just singing to, to the depths of our hearts those hymns. Because we seek to be a, that awesome community of faith that he has created us to be, making a difference. If you believe, folks, if you believe that we are doing that here, If you believe that we are doing that here, then please support the work and the fellowship that we do here with your tithing of your time. Get involved. Volunteer. With the tithing of your talents the tithing of your money. Consecration Sunday is October 28th, and it's, it's one of the most thoughtful, it's one of the most faith-reflective, it's one of the most feet-on-the-ground, practical, and personally inspiring days of our church here. I, mean, I, I love Consecration Sunday. It is so meaningful for me because it, it, it focuses my life. And what I ask you is that you might think and that you might pray about your support, time, talents, money. Please know, we have some challenges, some some changes in personnel, in how we move forward in ministries, We have changes that we will need to address this coming year. But I'll tell you, all challenges, here's my heart, all challenges are but opportunities when we allow God into the mix. I want to thank you for your partnership, friends. It's good to be back. May you read over that case statement of this congregation's work that was sent to you in the mail this past week. Read it over. This is what we're about. This is what we're doing. The lives that we're touching. And I pray that you and I, we might meet this coming year fully funded with great volunteers stepping up. Paul writes to Timothy, he says, those who are rich in this world should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they may be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. Folks, that's why That's why we do what we do in our personal lives. And why we do what we do in the life and ministry and mission of this congregation. It's good stuff that we are about together. And I look forward to this coming year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.